how do you want to do the back end? Do you want to um, loop, try and make a complete loop, you know, with square it off like you have it here with one big one in the front? Or you have this, so instead of having this straight and square, just make a nice arch back here. So I'll show you what other people have done. But I don't like this way because it's like I got it's yet another piece to make. Yeah, it's an extra but, cut or an um, extra bend. So let's see. You know the, right? Mm hmm And then they'll do bends like this. Right? To connect it. And then they'll make another piece. It goes like this. Mm, that connects back. Yeah, and this is the part that, and then generally they, someone they'll put a bolt in it and bolt it through, which I really never like that because if it snaps right here, then you know your rack's kind of toast. Where when you use the tab, if your bolt snaps, you just replace the bolt. So we're trying to figure out how to make the back end of the platform go on the inside of the brakes and so that there's enough room to clear everything. And uh, which I think is pretty clever. I have not really done it that way and that was Jeremy's suggestion to have it on the inside. Um, so we needed to figure out what the radius was going to be and how it was, and this is just a test piece, and how that was going to connect to the bigger part of the platform to create a uh, teardrop. So instead of having two pieces, we're going to loop this around to mimic this. And so it's going to connect or go past. Cool. I think this is going to look really, really nice. Yeah. Do some adjustments on it, but... Um, so with the um, acetylene, you open it one, like one and a half. Okay. Right? And I set it at five. Okay, five. That's right. Interesting, yep. Somewhere on there. And then with oxygen, um, you have this open. And you generally, you want to open it and not be in the way of that, just in case <laughs> it goes flying. It, it never has, but it's just one of those stupid safety things they teach you in school, right? Yeah. And with oxygen, so it's not going to fly. You open it up all the way. Okay. And then, um, from what he was saying, generally it's two to one. So if you got that at five, you have the pressure at ten. Ah, interesting. Oxygen. Okay. And that has worked for me. All right. So the, on this part, it's uh, really tight. I'm going to use uh, 56 silver, so it's it's going to flow thinner. Okay. It's not going to build up. We don't need it to build up in, in this case. We just need it to penetrate. So I like to use a really light, small frame. Yeah, what kind of, yeah, this is interesting. So less... And Paul, and Paul Brody says you get it to the sharp point. Uh -huh. And then you back it out a little bit so it's just flip, fluttering at the point, right? It's just a small little flutter. If you have it sharp, that's kind of like a welding, like you're, you're trying to weld with it. Or you're just trying to have a concentrated heat, but not um, penetrating weld kind of. And I don't really know how else to describe it. It's just one of those things you're starting to feel. And we're breathing. So you're adjusting the oxygen right there? A little bit of both. A little bit of both, okay. Stainless, like, it really conducts heat, right? So you want to keep things moving. You don't. If you leave the torch on it too long, that's when you start burning stuff. And in this case, it's all the same thickness, 
but in general, when you, you're, you're braising something that's thicker to something thinner, you keep the heat mostly on the thicker part or you preheat the thicker part first. So um, you just have less likely to burn. And then it starts to wet, you know. When it starts to do that, that's when you know it's getting close. And you can also see it get sucked in. As Belenke aptly puts it, you use your torch like a paintbrush almost. Paintbrush? Like a paintbrush. Like uh -huh. silver wants to go where the heat is. So if you want it to go this way and you have your torch, you kind of like fan it, put the heat on there for a minute, second, split second, and it goes where the heat is. Wow, that looks good. See the little black spots? Yeah. Where it cooked just a little bit, but like hard, that's hardly anything. Well, that's way less than what I was doing. When I was doing it, it just caked in hours of <laughs> black soot to s sand and file off. So I like to use hot water. So we'll get some hot water going and then dip it in there real quick. Comes off. Comes right off. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I would like to see that. So we're going to reuse this hole, right, for the tab. Yeah. But it's going to be our breather hole right now. braised in this side first, right? A yeah. Little nub. I'm gonna try and keep my heat more on this side so it, it doesn't, I just don't erase all the work I did on the, the other side. I see. Plus, I'm trying to get it to flow onto this side. See how that, see that steam coming out there? Yeah. Uh, otherwise I'd be building up inside here. And then once we seal it up, it's gonna wanna escape through the joint and end up blowing little holes. See how it got a little red there? Yeah, I saw it's that. It's kind of good because I now I know that that's hot and the silver is going in that way. Uh, and now I'm going to try and build up around the joint so that we can file it and it looks smooth afterwards. Like almost a seamless joint. Yeah, you'll see it because it'll be a different color, but. The idea is to make it as seamless as possible. And you let gravity do some of the work for you, you know? Yeah. If I miss something, I can always go back later, touch up. With silver too, you can like tap it, like it flows, and then pull the heat off real quick, and it'll kind of melt to where you want it to. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the goal. That's the idea. So you don't need to brush it off or anything. It just kind it, of it melts off. Wow, look at that. Yeah, I was spending hours filing it all off. Yeah. 
But I wasn't using that hot of water. I didn't know when they said hot water, they meant boiling hot water. Yeah. I was just using lukewarm tap water. So have you made a rack with this thin of tubing? No, no. So no guarantee, so <laughs> no warranty on this one. <laughs> Miss Cools, she doesn't carry anything heavy, so she'll be fine. Well, I think for a front rack too, I think this is gonna be fine. You know, if, if we're making a big poor tour size rack and you're gonna be putting 50 plus pounds on it, then yeah, I, I, I mean, we're doing this because we're making it together and you supply the material. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it'll clear. It's not hitting anything. It's not hitting anything. Yeah. We are going to have to take this off. This angle is not too close to the hole. Yeah. You know, we want it to be a, just a little more. A little more of a bend. Just okay. a little more. tab out a little bit but we're gonna braise it in and then we'll make the adjustment now will you be using the uh, silver for that or is that gonna also go Philip Pro I'm gonna use Philip Pro okay because there can be twist you know um, yeah torque this on there point, this way uh -huh. so I want to build it up a little bit to insurance yeah uh -huh. Now again on this, because the tab's thicker than the tube, you know, I, I hit that a little bit first. I and see. I try and keep the flame on, the t on that more than the tube, because then you start to burn the flux uh, out of the tube more. Always moving the, um, always moving the torch. But I think that's the nice thing about the tab is that it offers that flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is what it is now. That's where it's going to be. Yeah. And we'll just match the other side to it.
so we're just finishing up the final the final strut here and then we're going to make the tombstone and I think we're going to be running out of time for today so what are, what we're going to do is take it home try it out without the extra side pieces that we were planning to use and just see if it actually works if it works it'll be a, a little bit lighter and if it doesn't then the design allows us to add those on later so it's not going to you know seriously affect it's modular it's modular The nice thing is, the more you can get it to flow the way you want it to, like this, the less filing in it. That you have to do. So basically, got enough time to soak it off, and then we're gonna have to call it a day. Yeah. But we get some water going. Yeah, we're gonna have to. So after I left the shop with John a few days ago, I took Miss Cools out for a bike ride to test out the rack. Even though it's not, it's not done yet, but I wanted to test it out and make sure that our cable system here passing through the rack would not be a problem. You know, once you're out on the road, that's when you really discover when things go wrong. So it turns out uh, there was a slight issue. The brakes worked fine, but because of how close the rack was to this crossover straddle here, or the uh, yoke as it's called, there was a little bit of a, a vibration. It was just too close and it was rubbing. It was vibrating enough that it would actually rattle. So I realized what we need to do is move the rack back closer to the fork crown. The rack tab that we used, the way it was made, it kind of bent outward and then down. So it kind of pushed the rack too far forward. I attempted to try to bend it and I tried it a few different ways, but I ended up breaking it. So uh, my next thought was using a flat plate, brazing it to the back, that would allow us to move it forward or move it closer to the fork crown. And I tried that, but the problem there was that it was rubbing on the headset, the bottom headset cup. So then I thought, well, why don't we just drill a hole through, let's put a piece of uh, metal on here, a piece of stainless steel, and let's braze it to the, to the back of this tube and we'll reinforce it and we'll drill a hole straight through the tube and use that. So that's where we're at now and it's working pretty good. I have to do a couple things to it and uh, get it filed down and th I need to make it a little bit thinner, but I think we're really close. It's, it's not, gonna, not gonna rub, but you know what? Miss Cools should take it down the road and see, ride it on some rough surface and just see if she notices, but it's definitely not rattling now. Not like it was the first time. No rattles, okay. All right, so the next thing I need to do is figure out how to make the rack a little more level. I can see it's sloping up. So I gotta cut those struts shorter and bring them down a little bit. All right, folks, welcome back. It's day two. We're back to Fit Cycles in Santa Rosa and we're gonna finish up the rack today. I need to show John the modifications that I made to the rack and uh, see what he thinks. So hopefully he's okay with it. And then we can just finish up. We need to put the little side wings that we're calling them wings on the side of the rack just to give the rack, the, the bag a little more support. And then I think we're done. Oh, all right. I get the reaction. We'll uh, move this in the back. 
Dog's saying good morning too. Yeah, I hear him. He's like uh, slower to the draw though, that dog. <laughs> yeah? He's got a re slower reaction time. Well, I'm like, you know, how come he's not barking at you guys when you're like over there? Right. <laughs> a little late. Well, he's hoping yeah. you'll save him. I guess so. Okay, John. So, before you get, uh, get upset, I had to make a couple modifications. Well, okay. I'm on for it. So, let me turn this down. So, we took it out on a test ride. Okay. And we noticed that the, the cable banger started bouncing and clanging off of the wrap. Okay. So, I tried to bend the little tab a little bit more to move the rack back a little to try to get the, the you know, that the circular arch open uh -huh. more to yeah. create more space. And I just ended up bending it and breaking it off. Oh, okay. So I decided I was just going to leave it alone and see if you had any ideas. And then I was like, you know, you, you were busy this week or last week, whatever. So I thought, you know what? It looks fine. And I've done stuff like this before, but... I drilled it out and put a uh, water bottle boss in there and then drilled that out. Wow. So it was sleeved all the way inside nice. and on the outside too. Yeah, that would have been nice. So it's a similar idea. Um, yeah. And if it's not bouncing and hitting, then I would say it works. So what we can do is um, put it in the vise again. So you got that? Yeah, hold there. Yep. And then, yep. Bend it towards you. Right. Should it be a little bit more level, or that's it? That's it. Uh, I would say, yeah, a little more. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll go back and bend this one a little more too. Okay. Oh, it's got the, oh yeah, it's got the 90. Yeah, but there's Maybe always what's called spring back. Okay. That's why you go a little more, but not too much more. You get a feel for it after a while, I bet. Yeah. It's time to get a new file. Do you think it's a thinner tubing makes it a little bit stickier? Nah, this file has been kind of like wanting to be retired. Yeah. <laughs> it's been begging. <laughs> Final piece. Now we gotta clean it up. Yeah, take a picture of this jig. It's pretty high tech. <laughs> <laughs> We're revealing all the top secrets in this video. I do that all to myself all the time. Am I doing this right? Why is this taking so long? I'm sure somebody has figured it out faster than me. Probably not. I think it's just. Yeah, it's just easier. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. It just is what it is, right? Yeah. So here's where we started. This was the basic concept. Super simple, just thought maybe rectangular shapes would be good. And really I just wanted to define the, the, the size of the rack. So I took, took this over to John and we slowly evolved. We, this was the next idea here where we talked about how to potentially make a rack so we could mount it to the fork crown with the cable being able to pass through the center of the rack, the brake cable. Then we discussed, well, how do you actually make a platform that would work with two different size curves? So we ended up with this larger diameter radius here and a smaller diameter radius back here. Uh, but then that brought up this discussion of, well, how do you make this curve here and keep these parallel? And it got complicated. Uh, we also talked about these side wings being on here and some different ideas for the shape. We come over to here. We manufactured, you know, we made the rack top first and we decided to go with two different size curves and do this non-parallel setup here. And then we came back and thought, well, how do we do the wings? Do we do parallel sides or do we try to match with uh, the sides parallel to that or go straight. So Miss Cools took a look at some options and came up with this rack here. And here it is, the finished, finished product. Right there, yeah, go for that. Yeah, and then right here, it's a little dark. <laughs> so, in summary, <laughs> And you don't get much more custom than this because we're making decisions like <laughs> as we go. Yeah. So Therese, how do you want this bend to go? Do you want it to be sharper, bigger? Right. Hmm, John, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> now I know it slowed you <laughs> And way I'm down. like, all right, you guys, yeah. it's time to decide <laughs> on this stuff. Let's go. Yeah. And I know it slowed you way down having me mm -hmm. here, but at the same time, that was kind of the point, right? We wanted to do a, a, do a collaboration where yeah. I could learn something watching you and then we could come up with a cool interesting rack for, for the schools. Absolutely and this was my small token of thanks for all your guys' uh, interest in my work. Yeah. So yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you. John. We thank can't thank, thank you. you enough. Yeah. Man. Cool. For the well. adventure to start. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Well it came out great so we'll put a bunch of b-roll shots in and um, but yeah, I think it's it's done. Cool, man. Thank you, John. You got it. My pleasure. All right. Thank well, you, John. You're welcome, mm -hmm. Therese.